Hi, so in video 1379, we took this, a rock, and made some tools out and drilled a hole with it. It's actually a bit of flint. And somebody in the comments asked a really great question, actually. They said, uh, OK, but can you make a transistor out of it? And the surprising answer is yes. And I answered shortly, yes. Not because I was trying to be a pain in the ass about it, but I thought it was a super interesting question and deserved its own video. Now, to work out how we could use this as a transistor, we need to have a look at the Bell Labs transistor. So this is a model of the original invention, and it was invented in 1947 by American physicists John Bardeen and Walter Bratton while working at Bell Labs under William Schottky. And in 1956, they were awarded the Nobel Prize for Physics for it. Now, it's a bit difficult to see what's actually going on here, so let's have a look at this schematic. This shows more clearly how that was made up. Essentially, what they did was wrap a bit of gold around a plastic wedge, press it against a germanium block. But that little bit of gold, they put a thin slice separating the two sides of the point of the plastic. So you had two leaves of gold and they were very, very close and they pressed against the germanium. And that's how they made this transistor work. Now, before putting that thin slice in there, this was in fact a point contact diode. A point contact diode is still used today and it looks like this. It's basically a very sharp point on a bit of semiconducting material and a diode acts like a valve. It only allows the flow of electricity in one direction and it's essential to radio communication. And it was used in the First World War when soldiers would make their own diodes. So you could find some beautiful examples like this or some really rough and ready homemade examples like this. And a huge range of materials were used. Galena, which is a kind of lead ore, iron pyrites, which is a kind of iron ore. Silicon was used, uh, corborundum was used, and you can even use a rusty razor blade and a pencil. Now, I would have thought it's pretty obvious that there's a link between the early diodes and the transistor. Basically, the transistor's an early diode, they cut down the middle of it, and this didn't escape early radio pioneers, of course. Now, I've put a link to this book in the description. This is the PW Crystal Experimenter's Handbook, first published in 1925, and I've included it because it gives the background on this device. This is the Adams Crystal Amplifier, also known as the Lost Transistor. So crystals, which are just a special form of rock, I mean, flint, it's a special form of rock, eh? It has to have certain properties, or you can't make tools out of it. Try making tools from sandstone. So all rocks are special kind of rocks, in a sense. So crystals, as a special kind of rock, have been used well before the actual transistor to make transistors. Now, one of the properties that they need is something called negative resistance. Negative resistance is a strange property because normally when you increase the voltage on something, you increase the current flow. But with negative resistance, when you increase the voltage, you decrease the current flow. And in special circuits, this could be used to make switches, uh, memory stores, uh, amplifiers, which of course is exactly what transistors are. And if you're interested in that, you should jump over to a chap site called Niall Steiner. Niall has done extensive research into negative resistance of what we think of ordinary materials, and his most popular one is zinc oxide. Now, as a complete aside, Niall did also make a triode, which is a kind of transistor, from a flame. So it's brilliant to see some of the stuff this guy does. But he's been investigating that and doing some real work in that to show what other kind of materials can be used to make transistors apart from what we think of as transistors. But if you really want to take your hat off and be impressed by making a transistor out of rocks, you've got to have a look at Ryan Jordan. So Ryan used actual rocks and a series of point contacts across different rocks. He actually used um, chalcopyrite, which is a uh, copper iron sulfide, and of course iron pyrite. But this worked as a transistor, amplifying the sound. <laughs> Ryan is a Brit, and you have to think that's slightly crazy to do such a thing. But equally, it just goes to show what we can actually do with a bit of digging down in things, a bit of inventiveness, a bit of creativity, you can indeed make a transistor from a rock. 
Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it sparked some ideas and interest in you. I am going to talk a little bit more about the philosophy of this and the ideas behind this on the TNT channel. So if you haven't dumped, jumped over to Welcome to the World of TNT, I've put that link in the description as well. And nip over there, have a look and see what else we're up to. Anyway, thank you very much for watching and please remember to like and subscribe.